We're joined by the four women who just won seats in the U.S. Congress to represent Pennsylvania. We have Susan Wild, Chrissy Houlihan, Mary Gay Scanlon, and Madeline Dean. Thank you, ladies, for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you pleasure. for having us. I I'm going to try to make it around and make sure we hear from all of you. And I'm going to start with Congresswoman elect Thank you. Wild. Uh, you all campaigned together and supported each other. What does it mean that you're going to Washington together? I'm actually so excited about it. We've become friends since the primary. We've um, had, we've broken bread together. We've had a group chat going on our phones and it's just, it's great to know that I will be going with, with three women I consider to be my good friends now. What was that group chat like? <laughs> oh. Well, it can be anything from, you know, mundane to hilarious, hilarious. You know, we were kind of either joking with one another or asking each other for advice or organizing margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's well a done. variety of things, exactly. <laughs> You, you will all be joining a wave of women who mm -hmm. are all heading to Washington. So, Congresswoman-elect Scanlon, what, what will the difference be having more women in Congress? What difference will it make? Wow. I, I mean, we've never gotten above 19, 20 percent women in Congress. Um, that's certainly not reflective of the rest of the world or mm -hmm. the rest of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully it'll start looking a little more like the real world. And, and Congresswoman-elect Dean, you have seen uh, you've seen things from the inside because you're you're a member of the the state house here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So what have what have you seen in terms of the difference of having women uh, more women in the room? I think we problem solve better if we have a more diverse uh, set of people around the table. I'm a member, current member of the Pennsylvania House, just finishing up my six years uh, of service there, uh, and we are at about 19, 20 percent women in the Pennsylvania House. Uh, it's it's problematic when you don't have more women, more people of all kinds of diversity around the table. And I have to tell you, it feels really good to be here and have the chance that all four of us uh, made it across the finish mm -hmm. line and, and ran really terrific races. I'm, I'm proud to be with these three women. You all could be going into a Congress, though, that is even more divided than it has been. And, and we've heard uh, rhetoric and um, we've seen nasty ads during the campaign, but also just in Washington, the tone there. Um, how are you going to handle that and what is your strategy to get people to talk to each other? Well, I, I think I haven't been in the legislature. I was on a school board and we did, you know, have a diversity of people on the school board. Um, so when I started, there were two men, two women and seven men. And as we got to parity, um, we did see a change in decision-making style, a little less of the zero-sum game that maybe Newt Gingrich made, po um, made so popular, and a little more problem-oriented, uh, problem-solving oriented. So I'm hopeful we'll see something similar. Also, just talking with the electorate, people are tired of mm -hmm. Congress not doing its job. And I think a lot of people who were successful yesterday were successful because they're going in with a commitment to get the job done. Yeah, in my race, we we tried very deliberately for, from the very beginning to run a campaign that was a positive campaign mm -hmm. and that was about the issues that we were for and not the people or issues that we were against. And mm -hmm. I think that that really resonated with people. It was definitely yeah. what we were hearing at all the doors. Regardless, frankly, of party, people wanted civility. You know, they wanted pragmatism. They wanted their government to work for them. And I think that we've run campaigns that have tried to reflect those values back to the people. Yeah. We just heard from the president today saying that he thinks he can work with Democrats. Can you all work with him? Absolutely. I, I think a big issue that we could first and foremost look at is something like transportation and infrastructure. I think that's something that in our particular part of the country really needs some help. Uh, the opioid crisis, I think, as well, is something that we could probably tackle together. You, you mentioned a couple issues. Are any of you going to Washington with some bills tucked in your pocket? I hope to do exactly that. Uh, and and I, to your question about can we work with one another, as we went around... Can we, you work with the president? And work with the president. Uh, I think we have an obligation to do that. Uh, as we went around to the polls yesterday, we saw people in lines all day long, standing in the rain. It was such a high turnout. It was like a presidential year turnout. Uh, and I think that was a referendum on decency and making sure you work across the aisle and you work with this administration if they will work with us. Uh, for the good of uh, you know this Commonwealth, for the good of our communities, uh, and I hope to be able to go in and, and make a difference uh, with some legislation right away. One of the areas I care deeply about is gun violence. 
I think the Congress is long overdue at looking at that problem and actually passing legislation that will save lives. I believe we have an obligation to do that. You mentioned all of the lines and all of the people who came out mm -hmm. to vote yesterday. And some of those people came out to vote for you and other Democrats because they wanted a check on the president. So uh, what do you, what responsibility do you feel to them? Well, you know, it's interesting. Chrissy and I both have districts that are very evenly divided in terms of party affiliation. I know speaking for my district, for the people in my district, that they, I would echo what, what my colleagues here have said, that people are really tired of the division. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to have to find a way to work with our president. Um, we are going to have to find a way to move this country forward. I think that's what people are really expecting us to do. It, it's not enough to be elected. Now it, the hard work begins. Uh, we all thought that the last year was a hard year. It, it, I don't think it's anything compared to what we're going to see in the next two years. Um, I think we're all prepared to go and, and work incredibly hard. One of the things I want to do is approach it very much the way I approached my professional career for the last 30 years as a litigator where I had to constantly work across the aisles, so to speak, with people on the other side because I had clients who needed problems resolved. They didn't want to hear a, a, about how the other lawyer and I were always fighting about something. And it's, and it's a similar situation. Have any of you heard from other women in Congress reaching out to you? Oh, yes. Yes, so <laughs> absolutely. What are they saying? The, wonderful. The, the way it is yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. The women who are already in Congress have been phenomenal, frankly, oh, from yeah. start to finish yes. in terms of text messaging us, you know, throughout uh, the time, phone, phone calling us. But the other thing that's been remarkable is I'm also kind of part of another collective that is women veterans uh, who have served either in the military or in the CIA who are running on, on the Democratic side. Many, many of them made it through as well. Uh, and we've had the same kind of a camaraderie and conversation and similar to bringing more women to the table, more diversity of experience to the table. Veterans also have that same kind of a, of a sensibility of being uh, nonpartisan and being willing to work across you know, teams. You know, you're not looking in the back of a cockpit and asking you know, who, what party affiliation you have before you can get in a plane you know, or in a helicopter. So it's really an exciting time to be a woman and a veteran. Mm -hmm. in, in Washington, uh, there is a woman who, who is um, going for a, a leadership post, Nancy Pelosi, and it was sort of hypothetical during the campaign whether or not she would have enough support to become speaker, but now it is real. So will, will you support her? Would you support her in that? She hasn't yet asked me for a vote, but I Does will Does she say, need to do that? Uh, well, when you run for leadership, absolutely you do. And I've had some experience with leadership elections in the Pennsylvania House. Uh, but I will say uh, that uh, uh, Congresswoman Pelosi has been very generous with her time with all of us uh, in terms of really wanting to mentor us, uh, encouraging us in our runs. Uh, I admire her leadership skills, so I look forward to the leadership elections. The rest of you, would you support? For me, you know, I approach this very similar to anything else that I have responsibility to when I get there, and I haven't yet gotten there. You know, this is still seven hours old at this point <laughs> in time. Uh, and, and for me, this is a matter of just like our elections, you need to consider who is running and right now we don't know who is. We need to uh, consider, in my opinion, what their platform is, why they're running, whether they've asked you for their support or not. And, and those are the responsibilities that I will take very seriously, not just for the leadership vote and decision, but for every single other bill that I'm asked to consider uh, and to vote on. Doesn't sound like there's a guarantee for any of you at this point. I, I, I don't think there is, I think, because I think that what Chrissy said is true. We all have to get there. We have to evaluate the situation. We have to see who's running. But we also, speaking for myself, I think it's very, very important that we recognize how diverse the new Congress is going to be mm -hmm. and that we make sure that what, whoever is chosen as the leader, that we have, as a party, a good succession plan in place a, that, that it takes into account the many faces of the Democratic Party as it now exists. I think that's critical. And so I, I haven't made a decision at all um, on, on that issue, but I do want to see us embrace the, the, dif the diversity of the party. And we're obviously not a monolith, you know, although we right. have a lot of things in yeah. common, we represent different types of or, uh, people and we are different humans, and so we'll make decisions, you know, individually. One of the things that I do appreciate about Nancy Pelosi is she's been so generous with her time with mentoring younger candidates or newer candidates, and she has been to Philadelphia twice in, in recent months to talk to younger women who are getting into the political sphere. 
for the first time, and I think that's so important. I mean, that's something I've been working on for a few years with Represent PA and other mm -hmm. groups that are um, trying to train the next generation of leaders. So I, I look forward to more of that. To actually get things done in Washington, there may be some compromises. Uh, are you willing to do something like vote for money for a border wall in order to get something else that you might want? I think compromise is essential, but there are some issues that 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 we can't compromise on, or any one of us on any particular issue. Um, I think that it will be a case by case basis, um, and obviously to move the country forward, there's going to have to be compromise on both sides. But it's going to pe depend on what the issue is, and there will be lines in the sand. For, is that for one of them? Speaking for me, um, <laughs> I I cannot f envision any situation under which I would vote to, to appropriate funds for a border wall. But I, I never say never. I just can't envision it at this point. I understand. Um, and the, the, you know, there are issues that have not been taken up that we could see taken up, uh, mm -hmm. like issues like DACA uh, that, that did not get um, a vote mm -hmm. last time. Is that, is that an issue that any of you think that you'll take up? I care deeply about the whole issue of immigration and also about uh, the DACA children and the Dreamers, uh, and we do need comprehensive immigration reform. Part of that package should not be a border wall. I've taken the time to visit the border. Uh, the lack of a wall is not our problem. We just need uh, immigration reform uh, that reflects who we are. Uh, what we have seen at the border with uh, this administration, whether it's sending troops because of uh, people who are impoverished uh, and fear for their lives and their own safety, and we're sending troops to the border, uh, that's not the American values that uh, I believe in or that I think Montgomery County believes in, Berks County for that matter. Um, but compromise is an important part of legislating. Uh, we have to be open to compromise. If we dig in more and more the way we have seen uh, Congress do at this time, we're not going to get anywhere, and we will have failed the people who voted for us. So uh, I, I embrace compromise. I embrace the give and take of legislating. Uh, and But there are some things that we have to pick our priorities. If you invest in a border wall while you give away tax money to the very, very wealthy, we've thrown our priorities way off. And I hope we're a part of bringing the priorities back to how we appropriate. I know we need to wrap up, but I just want to ask you all, how, how are you going to handle all going to Washington together? Are you going to meet once a week? How, how's this, uh, this going to work? I hope we meet at the floor to, make, to play some votes, that's I think. Right. Yeah, that's right. We're meeting. Certainly. Well, we're overdue for getting together. Early right. on in this, or right after the primary yeah, maybe it was, right. we had a chance to socialize and just decompress uh, one evening. So we're overdue for that. We are overdue, and although I think, I think our schedule is going to be pretty packed for I, a little while. So, I know. But, I know. but I very much look forward to continuing our friendship. I know that will happen. I don't think any of us have been able yet to think through the logistics of getting there, going there, being there, living there, um, and, and so forth. So. Um, but I, I know our friendship will endure. The tweet is, we are pleased to announce that Matthew G. Whitaker, Chief of Staff to uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions at the Department of Justice, will become our new Acting Attorney General of the United States. He will serve our country well. We thank Attorney General Jeff Sessions for his service and wish him well. A permanent replacement will be nominated at a later date. I know that this is a brand new information that you're sure. that you're all absorbing. This is the kind of thing that that happens. Um, what is your initial reaction? I'm going to ask you, Congresswoman elect Wild. I, I'm not surprised. I don't, I don't know that any of us um, are surprised by this. I think it was ex somewhat expected. I, I hope that um, good leadership is put in at the Justice Department for the long term. What questions do you have now? I'd like to find out the facts <laughs> of, of, of the firing, sure. of the resignation, right. what was the basis of it. Right. Uh, but it's problematic, and, and it is uh, not surprising. It, it's further evidence of sort of the chaos uh, within this White House, uh, which is dismaying. I hope that after these midterms, there is a greater stability uh, and an honoring of the public service and the important roles that the folks in that building have uh, by this president. I think it's part of the reason certainly that I decided to run for Congress was because of my concern about the dysfunction of, of what I perceive to be happening in Washington. I know it's part of the reason why the tens of thousands of people in my community and other communities mm -hmm. around me 
or motivated for the very first time to be ci uh, civically engaged in a way that they never had been before. And so I think this is why new people need to be going down fresh legs to be helpful. And I just think, you know, it, it, you end up in a strange position. I was not a big fan of Jeff Sessions. I was not a big fan of his use of um, private prisons or his um, re-energizing mandatory minimum sentences or his um, impact on the immigration uh, wars that we've been having over the last two years. But he was a check on, on some impulses of this administration, and, and his departure does lead to more chaos down there. So it is a strange and troubling time. Thank you, ladies, Thank once you. again. Thank, Thank you, you very much.